totally broke it. Actually, now I can get that back in there and fix it up. I was going to switch the motors since they're exactly the same for the servo motors, except this one's in here and it is pretty well press fit in there and isn't going anywhere. And I'm not heating this thing up just to get it out because that would be bad. So I'm going to have to stuff this back in there. All of these, except for one little eyelet, was broke. I don't know when it was broke. I was just putting the stand up and uh, decided to go. I'm glad I saw it and not when I was running the machine or anything. So let's stuff that back in there. And probably just gonna have to tack weld. I was afraid that this is cast, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if it is or isn't. But if it's cast, then my welds aren't gonna hold at all. That's not gonna be any fun. So, all right, I'm gonna have an update. I am not gonna take this guy apart. He's pretty solid as is. So, all that's left is to put. I mean. I don't want to repaint this either, plus the fact that it could very well be cast, which I don't think it is the more I look at it, but every time I look at the cracks themselves, it makes me think that it is. But anyways, this is pretty solid. I don't think I have issues, but you never know. Of course, I got the servos. You know, they're all back in place. What's up? The ones underneath this box, but they're back in action. <clears throat> Everything looks good. That connector that broke doesn't seem to be too bad. I just flipped it around so that the parts that weren't broken are actually, you know, being used. If I have to, I can get some like epoxy and just epoxy it on there, <laughs> even though that's like the cheapest way to do it. Um, and for now it will work, then I can fix up a replacement or, or, or order a replacement or do something. I'm 90% certain it's cast. The more and more I think about it, it's cast. And uh, welding cast iron is pain, and I don't want to do it. Plans for the shop as is. I am planning on this spring, spring slash summer, so late, late spring, I'm going to be rebuilding this laid and it's a clossing but i think and there's only a few reasons that make me say that, yeah this is probably odd as it would be mid 1940s clossing uh either right after the war or sometime in the war which doesn't make much sense to me why it would be in the war but it wouldn't surprise me um there's a few reasons the castings on this were pretty pretty poorly done um, I've had stress fractures, just old fractures over time. Those might just be time related. For instance, the transmission switch or the, for the feed, the power feed, the auto feed is broken and was broken and it gave up the ghost last year. So I put this ugly temporary replacement on there. And once I get the CNC mill up and running, I'm going to replace that because that doesn't look too too nice or i mean i can machine to make it look better <clears throat> so another thing is the stop for the carriage the actual bolt where it would bolt down that was made out of cast iron which also broke uh, that part should not have been made out of cast iron they made it out of cast iron probably as a time saving measure um, there are blemishes on the ways themselves where I thought this was a welding repair where they would have welded it up and reground it right there. But that just looks like a cast. So it was cast <clears throat> rather poorly, which doesn't make much sense because it's clossing. Uh, rather poorly cast and wasn't well done to begin with. Um, and the castings are showing that now. Uh, me mechanically, besides the transmission <clears throat> for the power feed, 
Nothing else seems to be too terribly bad uh, on this machine. I mean, this this spot where the uh, the casting was poorly done on the ways is so far back. You're probably never going to be doing it. That's why it was passed. Probably why it was passed. Um, other thing is the lever for the feed is totally gone, and I'm going to be replacing that. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to weld cast iron, which I will need to preheat, weld, grind, preheat again. And wherever I see a stress fracture before I even preheat, I'm going to have to drill so it releases the tension and doesn't continue cracking, which is going to be fun. On the other hand, <clears throat> I did get the bluing done. They don't look too bad. This one, I don't think I had enough blue up there. Or very little, but there's an empty spot, which I'm somewhat concerned about, but not too bad. Come around back to the machine. I got the tower just mounted up on top for now. And I bolted it down, so it's not, it's not going to be knocked off. Let me open this up real quick. Uh, if we get down here, I took the... This is down where the old controller and everything used to sit. I'm going to put the Maso card in. So right now I've got this guy unplugged and I just unplug him so I don't have anything weird going on. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm going to unplug it here. That way these loose wires for like the fans don't short this out uh, because that would not be good. And we got the Rhino power supplies. And a little breaker down there. VFD, of course. All but one of the um, servo drivers. The other one's inside because I was working on it. Um, I'm waiting on a fuse for the 220 coming in so we don't blow something up and uh, regret it later. But I think we're pretty set. I need to eventually take the time and... Oh, where is that wire? The individual channels for the encoder and get them wired up to this. That way, I guess you could have a, a glorified DRO. It wouldn't be actually too bad considering they're ball screws. They'd be pretty precise. So, and then we need to get the 220 running out here and then get this guy going. But that's probably going to be a week or two away. This thing is a pain to open and shut. So, and I've been working on the scraping, getting better at it. One of the things I didn't know um, on this lathe, another thing that's freaking weird with the casting, is... Every, everywhere on the slave, it's on the V's of the ways. Uh, they're, um, they're dished out in the middle, which is weird because you'd expect it to be dished out right where all the work happens. And out here, you know, nothing, but like right there, you could see, sure enough, that it's not quite right. And I don't know, it's annoying and it's weird and doesn't make much sense. Oh, another thing, and I'm not gonna fix this one. This is the only thing I'm not gonna fix on this lathe. The back gear, one of the teeth for the back gear is broken. Uh, it is still technically runnable. Uh, I don't know if I'd do it. I have run it before in the past, but under load, it just wants to kick out the bar into neutral, so I'll just use it as a lock. That way, that goes nowhere, and I can run it. <clears throat> Of course, the oil pump on the mill is, I think that's the only mechanical thing that's, that's wrong with it. I had to remove the uh, auto, not the auto, power draw bar. I had to remove the power draw bar on it. That didn't do much of, of good because it was just, it was leaking air and um, it was jammed and some of the, some of the gaskets were just totally gone. So, and of course I got the screen and the keyboard on, so 
That way I can actually, you know, use the machine. Once we get the servos up and running and then the spindle going. <clears throat> so I think I rambled on enough about this. Um, yeah, I hope to be getting on the, uh, the lathe as soon as possible. Um, one of the things I realized, this mill does not have either an oil pump for auto oiling or for a coolant. And there is coolant down in it, but it is... It was either a water based with oil pressurized into it or it's just really disgusting and is separated and it is I don't even know where to get rid of the oil it's that bad um, I'll probably take it to the dump and I'll have something that they can do with it burn it I'm not burning it so I don't even want to be around if it burns so I think I've rambled on enough about this <clears throat> As always, thanks for watching.